Now that we have seen the northern and southern sides of the basilica, we are ready to walk down the center of the nave to the main altar. Near the front doors, on the floor, we see a round stone. This porphyry disc, called the Rota Porphyretica, was part of the old St. Peter's Basilica. Considered sacred, only popes and emperors were allowed to step on it. On this stone, Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor on December 25th, 800 AD. As we walk down the central aisle, we see various inscriptions on the floor. These include indications of where the largest churches in the world would be situated if they were placed inside St. Peter's. We also see this large memorial inscription to the special Holy Year of the Redemption, declared by Pope Pius XI in 1933. The Confessio is where St. Peter is buried. Referring to St. Peter's proclamation or confession of faith, the Confessio is in front of the tomb of St. Peter, which in turn is located below the main altar. The altar is where the Pope celebrates the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Located above many other altars, which in turn were built over the tomb of St. Peter, the current altar was consecrated in 1594. The massive baldacchino, or bronze canopy, was made by Bernini, with each column standing at a height of 66 feet the entire baldacchino weighs about 13,000 pounds. The massive dome is 448 feet above the floor of the basilica and has a diameter of 136 feet. Five foot tall letters proclaim, You are Peter, the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. Look around the basilica and the words of scripture continue. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you declare loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And on the southern wall, I prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may never fail, and you in turn must strengthen your brothers. We have more to see in the area around the main altar. First, this beautiful ambo, from where the readings for the Mass are proclaimed. Next, we visit four massive statues that encircle the altar. For example, the statue of St. Longinus, who is said to have pierced the side of our Lord at his crucifixion and was converted to Christianity. Each of these large statues is accompanied by a corresponding reliquary above it. However, the relics have been moved to another location. For example, here we see the large statue of St. Helen, who found the relic of the true cross. Above her, the original location of the relic of the true cross. St. Andrew, the brother of St. Peter, is shown here, with the original location of his relics located above. 
and Saint Veronica, who wiped the face of Jesus. The space reserved for the relic of the veil is above this statue. On the far western wall is the impressive Chair of Peter. A work of art that celebrates the Petrine ministry, the chair is the work of Bernini and was built as a reliquary for the chair used by St. Peter. In front are large statues of St. Ambrose and St. Athanasius on the left, and St. John Chrysostom and St. Augustine on the right. What looks like a stained glass window is thought to be made of alabaster, and depicts the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. St. Peter's is not reticent to embrace the latest technology. In October of 2022, a video presentation on the life of St. Peter was projected directly onto the Basilica facade, using digital technology called video mapping. It was a high-tech reminder of how it all began, with a simple fisherman who said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. St. Peter's Square and St. Peter's Basilica will continue to celebrate the faith for many years to come.